Yet, it is thanks to these men that the worst was avoided. A second explosion, ten times more powerful than Hiroshima, which would have wiped out half of Europe. This was kept secret for 20 years by the Soviets and the West alike. Many of these images have never been seen before. They were taken by journalists who were also exposed to nuclear contamination, some of whom later died. Those images tell the story of a hidden war, whose consequences continue 20 years later to worsen the toll of the disaster. This is the true story of the Battle of Chernobyl. The cement slab below the reactor core is heating up and in danger of cracking. The magma is threatening to seep through. The water the firemen poured during the first hours of the disaster has pooled below the slab. If the radioactive magma makes contact with the water, it could set off a second explosion even more devastating than the first. The country's top experts are called into action. Vasily Nesterenko was one of them. At the time, he was working on improving the Soviet Union's intercontinental nuclear missiles. If the heat managed to crack the cement slab, only 1,400 kilograms of uranium and graphite mixture would have needed to hit the water to set off a new explosion. The ensuing chain reaction could set off an explosion comparable to a gigantic atomic bomb. Our experts studied the possibility and concluded that the explosion would have had a force of 3 to 5 megatons. Minsk, which is 320 kilometers from Chernobyl, would have been raised and Europe rendered uninhabitable. We had to stop the process. If it continued, it would have been an enormous disaster. An enormous nuclear disaster. This second explosion would have been accompanied by a terrible shockwave and a massive rise in radioactivity that would have claimed thousands of lives in a matter of hours. Thank God it didn't happen. There were trains with over a thousand cars in Minsk, Gomel and Kiev ready to evacuate the population. The situation is critical. In Moscow, the State Commission decrees two emergency measures. First, send in a battalion of firemen to drain the water from under the reactor. They will later be declared national heroes, but will suffer from radiation sickness the rest of their lives. Second, seal the breach more effectively to bring the temperature down once and for all. The radiation levels are astronomical, and their worst fears are confirmed. The white-hot magma has cracked the cement slab and seeped into the empty basin. It is now threatening to sink even further. There was a 5 to 10 percent risk of explosion. We drained the water from under the reactor, but something absolutely had to be done. Something had to be put underneath the reactor to keep the magma from seeping down. Something had to keep it from falling in. Nothing is stopping the magma from seeping even deeper into the sandy subsoil. And beneath the reactor lies a huge stretch aquifer that supplies the entire country with water. What worried us the most was that the entire mass would sink down and reach the groundwater, which then would pollute the rivers Pripyat, then Dnieper, Kiev, the Black Sea. We absolutely needed to come up with a solution. Our mission was this, dig a 150-meter tunnel from the third blurb to the fourth, a tunnel 30 meters long. Then dig a room 30 meters long and 30 meters wide to hold a refrigeration device for cooling down the reactor. To limit their exposure to radiation, the miners dig 12 meters down before making their way over to the burning reactor. There, 
They build a room, two meters high and 30 meters wide, where a complex cooling system of liquid nitrogen will be set up. 